Today I'm going to share with you a very simple but important subject and that is pass the baton. Tell your neighbor pass the baton. Now I'm going to give you five things you need to know about life. Number one, you are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You are here for a reason. God wanted something done on this planet Earth that required your existence. That is why you are here. And the fact that you are still alive today is proof that you have treasure inside of you. And that treasure is your dream. That treasure is your purpose. That treasure is your ability to make things happen on this planet Earth. Number two, nobody is born empty. Nobody is born empty. Everybody born of a woman was given something to offer in this generation. You were not born empty. You were born with something. And generation needs what you are carrying on the inside of you. Inside of you, there is a dream of greatness. Inside of you, there is a vision that the generation requires. Inside of you, there are talents. Inside of you, there are gifts. Some of you are good cooks. Some of you are good singers. Some of you are doctors. Some of you are teachers. That is a treasure. And God deposited it inside of you so that generation could benefit from you. Praise Jesus. Number three, your assignment on earth needs people. Your assignment on earth needs people. Despite the fact that God gave you something to do on earth, you need people. You cannot do everything in life on your own. You cannot achieve your dream on your own. You cannot fulfill your purpose on your own. You need people. A tree cannot grow by itself without the soil of the ground. A fish cannot swim without water of the ocean. Even you, you cannot fulfill the purpose of God without people. With every Moses, there is Joshua. And with every Elijah, there is Elisha. With every Adam, there is Eve. Why am I telling you this? If you want to see yourself to another dimension that God has intended for you, if you want to see your dreams coming to pass, if you want to see the purpose of God fulfilled in your life, you need people. That is why even Jesus himself, when he came to earth, when he was about to start his public ministry, he began by choosing people, and we know them as disciples. They were 12, right? Why did he do that? Because it is a secret in the spiritual realm. If you want to accomplish anything, you need people. You can't do it on your own. Amen. Number four, your assignment is generational. Your assignment is generational. Anything that God gave you to do is supposed to impact generations after you. Why is that? Because God who created you, God who gave you the gift, God who gave you the vision is a God of generation. He is a generational God. And whatever it is that he gave you, I don't know what your gift is. Probably you are a good singer. Probably you are a good cook. Probably you are a good teacher. Probably you are a doctor or you are an engineer. Whatever it is that God gave you to do, it is supposed to go to generations after you. It is supposed to touch and impact generations after you. Number five, there is time to die. There is time to die. Everybody will die, including you. Please don't get nervous because I'm also in the section. Everybody will die. There is time to go back home to the one you have been serving. If you have been serving God in your area of gifting, death will take you back to God. If you have been serving Satan in your area of gifting, death will take you back to Satan. Are you following my drift? Amen? Now, when you know something is about to happen, when you know death is coming, the best thing you can do in this life is to prepare yourself because the death in itself is inevitable. All of us are going to die. The best thing we can do is to prepare for it. Praise be to Jesus. I want to show you something from the book of Second Timothy chapter 4 and I'm going to read from NIV version. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and I will read up to verse 6. The Bible says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, 
I give you this church. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am ready being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Praise be to Jesus. Now this is Paul the Apostle. And Paul was a faithful servant of God. He was given treasures by God to deposit on this planet earth. He had a vision to see the gospel of the kingdom reach many nations. But just like any other human being, Paul came to the end of his road. He was going to die. And his death was not far away. His death was very near. And because he knew that, because he had that revelation, he had to talk to Timothy, his son, his spiritual son, his mentee. And he was giving him instruction. If you read from 1 Timothy to 2 Timothy, you will realize that it is not an easy message. It was a message that is filled with instructions. It was a message that was filled with to-dos. Why was Paul telling Timothy everything he was telling him? He wanted to prepare Timothy to carry on the work that he, Paul himself, was doing for the glory of God. He knew he needed someone. Remember where we are coming from. If you have a dream in your life, if you have a vision, if you have a purpose, that purpose, that dream, that vision cannot be fulfilled unless there is a person to help you do it. People are equipped by God to help us fulfill our dreams. People are equipped by God to help us make our dreams come true. And Paul had this revelation and he knew through Timothy his dream would come to fulfillment. That is why he was talking to Timothy, his mentee. And he was telling him, Timothy, my son, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Now follow me carefully. In life, not everyone is called to preach. Standing in the pulpit and, you know, teaching the word of God. Not everybody was called to preach the gospel like the way I'm doing. Some people were given other things to do to glorify God. For instance, if you are a singer, God has given you that to glorify his name. If you are a doctor, God has given you that position to glorify his name. If you are an engineer, God has given you that. It's your purpose and he expects you to use it to glorify his name. In other words, whatever it is that you are doing in this life, you are serving God in your area of gifting, in your area of expertise. So don't look down upon yourself. And I'm saying this just to encourage you. Just because you are not a pastor, just because you are not a preacher, just because you are not a prophet or a teacher like me, doesn't mean that God has not called you. God has called you in your own area of gifting or expertise. We need bankers in the kingdom of God. We need business people in the kingdom of God. We need singers. We need engineers to construct structures like this. Everything that God gave you to do, it's your purpose. And when you do it, you are serving God who gave it to you. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. But as for Timothy, Paul was urging him to preach. Paul was urging him to preach. In other words, Paul was passing the baton to Timothy. Paul was passing the baton to Timothy. To pass the baton means to transfer responsibility to another person. To pass the baton means to transfer responsibility or vision or dream or idea or invention to another person who is going to carry it forward on your behalf to another generation, even if you are no longer around on this planet Earth. Are we together? Amen? All right. When you talk about passing a baton, the person 
you are passing the baton to is called a successor. Somebody say a successor. When you talk about success, it's not just about achieving what you wanted to achieve in life. Success means more than that. Success is generational. Success is having your dreams implemented even after you are there. Success means having your projects still working even after you die. Success is having your ideas still impacting people, governments, and generations, even if you are not around on the planet Earth. That is the kind of success that God wants you and me to have. God just doesn't want you to build a house and then when you die, everything that belongs to you gets forgotten or gets in ruin. God wants you to leave a mark in this generation. He wants you to leave a legacy. But you cannot build a legacy on buildings. You cannot build a legacy on cars. You cannot build a legacy on tangible things. You build a legacy. You leave a mark on people. Praise be to Jesus. If your dream dies with you, you are a failure. And God doesn't want you to be a failure. He wants you to be a winner. That is why he called me today to share with you this message to urge you, please don't die with your dream. Don't die with your vision. Don't die with your purpose. Your generation needs what you have inside of you. Now, how do you pass the baton? How do you pass the baton to another person? How do you pass the baton to your generation? I want to give you some keys. Key number one. Key number one to pass the baton is this. Identify a gift. Identify a gift. The world has over seven billion people, roughly. And each one of them have got some gifts and talents. And God will be parading these people in front of you. You'll find these people in the church, you'll find these people in the office, you'll find these people in the market. And each one of them have got something unique that you could use for your purpose. Each one of them have got something unique that you could use for your business. They got everything you need to achieve your dreams in this life. The only task that you have is to select among them. Choose the person who has what you have inside of you. If you are a singer, you will see people singing better than you in the church. Don't hate them. God is showing you an opportunity. God is telling you, my son, that is an opportunity. Take that person, be with him or be with her because whatever it is that they carry is going to supplement your vision, is going to supplement your purpose. When you die, that same person is going to carry a baton for you. Is going to transfer your vision to the generation, even if you're no longer around on the planet Earth. Are we together? Key number two. Key number two is mentoring. Somebody say mentoring. Once you select a person who has the ability or who has the potential to carry your dream, to carry your vision, or to carry your expertise. One thing you are supposed to do after identifying that person is to mentor them. Teach them what you know. Teach them how to do whatever it is that they are doing. Teach them how to do it much better. When you transfer your information, when you transfer your knowledge to them, you are creating an environment to transfer your vision to another generation. Praise be to Jesus. Everything I know, I learned it from somebody. Jesus used three years to mentor 12 disciples. That is why today we are seated here in the church and learn the word of God. Because of Jesus' mentorship. Just suppose Jesus decided to keep quiet about everything he knew. Just suppose Jesus decided not to teach them anything. We wouldn't have the church that we have today. But we are enjoying the fruit of the gospel. Because Jesus was good enough to teach his disciples what to do. And he told them, it is better for you that I go away. But he didn't say that in vain. He said that after he had already taught them enough to help them move forward with the vision that he was carrying inside of him. Praise be to Jesus. Train someone. Look for somebody. Don't die with that music in your heart. Don't die with your dream. Don't die with your vision. If you are a doctor, if you are an engineer, don't die with your expertise. Look for people. They are everywhere. They are looking for someone with something valuable like yours. Teach them. Help them. Share your knowledge. Transfer what you know to the generations. 
and you will never be forgotten. Steve Jobs, I like to give this example, is dead and buried right now. But Apple company still produces iPhones, still produces iPads. And these products are doing very well in the market, in the world market. But the guy is dead. What did he do? He refused to die with his vision. He refused to die with his purpose. He refused to die with his expertise. He decided to teach people how to do the job. And now the company continues, but the guy is dead. We remember him till today, till tomorrow, till forever. We will still remember the guy. Why? Because he decided to pass the baton. He decided to pass the vision to another generation. Now God has called me today to urge you, man of God, my brother and sister, whatever it is that you know, please don't die with it. Please don't let it die with you. If you're a teacher, look for people to teach. If you're a good cook, start an online class. We have YouTube. Use YouTube. Teach people. They will always mention you as long as they live. Even if you are dead, your name will still be alive on this planet Earth. And that is what God wants you to do. Praise be to Jesus. Key number three, develop a gift. Key number three, develop a gift. Say develop a gift. To develop means to grow. To develop means to expand. To develop means to get something grow stronger in such a way that it can stand on its own feet. Help people stand on their own feet. Encourage them. Motivate them. If you are a father, teach your children what you know. They will remember you for that. You will never be forgotten. Don't die with your vision. Pass the baton. Pass your responsibility. Pass your vision. Don't die with your vision. Say, pass the baton. Have you got something to help you today? Amen? If yes, why don't you give God a mighty hand of praise? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Say this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, anoint me to leave a legacy on this planet. Anoint me to leave a legacy in my generation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. God bless you. Amen.